Put yep. the poison on me. Hey, <laughs> our first class back. Uh, our last, the last class we had during our little break, we talked about uh, speaking like God, talking like God, saying what God said. And I came across a book called As a Man Thinking mm -hmm. before I taught that class. So we learned a lot of things about just thinking. Dougie sent me some link about this uh, thing on YouTube, the laws of attractions and how people, you know, are just you know, thinking themselves happy and somehow thinking themselves rich. And then I read another book, it's called Kingdom Principles, and he was talking about how he watched it, and it was like, when I watched it, all I said was, these are just kingdom principles that they are applying. And, and, and in the book, As a Man Thinketh, the, the, the quote that stuck out the most to me was, you don't attract that which you want, you attract that which you are. And I was just like, wow, I was reading it, and I was like, you know, I just connected with it immediately because I just was thinking about how serious, you know, we have gotten about ministry over this past year, and how I've just been going so hard, everything has been ministry-minded, and that's just become me. And I've just been running into everybody else who is just like that. And so as I was reading the book, I'm like, wow, I really see how the way I think has been attracting other people that think like that. And I mean, I've been on, on the phone with people that are, that are in different states now because God is just connecting the people because we're all like-minded in, 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 in our thinking. And that's just us thinking on our own, but we're, tonight we're going to talk about thinking like God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are supposed to be emulating Jesus, and uh, so we should be trying to do everything that he did. And, you know, there's this big fad going on of, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? But tonight, we're, we're going to uh, change our, our, our mindsets to think, you know, what would Jesus think? Everything that we think, everything that we uh, ponder on, everything that we keep in our mind, we need to first say, would Jesus think this? Were you listening to, listening to Jake's today? No, I was not listening to Jake's. This is crazy. Jake's today? Like, he had the everyday thing, like Joyce Myers had a... a oh, no, no, uh, no. I was about to get hyped, like, really? <laughs> but I can always find something new from him. Oh my God! I was listening. Um, <laughs> I was watching him. I can't even remember what the name was of of it. Oh, he was like it was finding the way, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Y'all need to stop talking about what would Jesus do because y'all don't even know what Jesus would do." Get it out your head. He said, "You need to put on the mind of Christ and say, what would Jesus be?'" And he said exactly wow. what you just said. What would yeah? Already. What would Jesus think about this? How would he handle you know this and put on the mind of Christ? And then when you think like Christ, you can act like Christ. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> word for word. Y'all know I get credit where credit is due. I'll tell y'all I was watching something. I did not watch this. <laughs> I did not have that. Watch TV. Um, but this is what God's been. I told, told y'all I was going to teach this two weeks ago. But um, yeah, so. So when we come to a point where everything we think is like Christ, not only will we live differently, but we will have a different power in life. Because now we fully understand who we are and we think the way we're supposed to think. So now if we attract that which we are, if we think and feel powerful, we are going to attract power. Uh, if we think and we attract healing, we're going to attract healing. Now, uh, we, we want to see miracles in life. But in, in order for us to see these miracles performed, we're going to have to think that we are miracle performers. <laughs> and, and that's one of the biggest problems. We can't see a miracle because we don't feel like a miracle can happen by our hands. We don't think that we are miracle performers. So therefore, we will never see a miracle happen because how can we have the faith to, um, to, to raise somebody from the dead or, or to raise somebody out of a wheelchair or to heal somebody if we don't think that we are miracle workers? Now, we're going to start in Philippians chapter 2, and we are getting ready to go radical. Y'all might, somebody might walk out of class right now because we're getting ready to get real radical. But a scripture... Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Very familiar, very familiar, as you just were speaking on. Let this mind be in you, which also, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
Now we have the question. What mind? Being in the form of God. Oh, we're going to go rap. <laughs> Philippians 2, 5 and 6. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God. Let that mind be in you that you are in the form of God. So why was Jesus able to do all the things that he did? Because he understood and thought, knew that he was in the form of God. He understood that if I say it, it's going to happen. If I touch him, I'm going to heal him. If I walk, the waters is going to allow me to walk on it because I understand I'm in the form of God. So let this mind be in yeah. you. Yeah. So when we are going through any type of situations mm -hmm. in life or anything that's going on, we got to understand and know in our mind that we are in the form yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. So, so now, once we have this different mindset to understand, I was, I was reading something on, on, on this, and it was talking about how God created man, and, and it almost uh, uh, was saying that God almost made us equal. Now, now we're not equal because he created us, but when we go in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And that word likeness just means in the similar to of, in the same way I am. And then it goes on to say, and let man have what? Dominion over everything. So now it was showing God says, I don't even want to have dominion over earth. Let us make man and let him have dominion over everything in the earth. And we talk about speaking like God, how God was like, go ahead, Adam. I, the, way, the way I spoke, I need you to speak and whatever you speak is going to be. So you got to understand that you like me. We are the children of God. We have been adopted into his family and have become his children. And children have their parents' DNA. The child is not the parent, but the child is, is almost like the parent. And when they grow up to understand what their parents imparted in them, then they can be just like the parent. Now, no, we can't be God, but we can be God on earth like Jesus was. We, the, it's, a, it's a God inside of us because the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is inside of us. The only thing separate us from Jesus, the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. But we have that same spirit in us. Now, we might not be God, but we have God living inside of us. So, therefore, if God is in us, he is a part of us. So, how are we not like him? Let this mind be in you. So, then we got to begin to think like God because we need to think like gods. Think like gods. Could you imagine, I know I watched the show. It's a dumb show. Oh, hey, I know you didn't see. <laughs> um, what is the name of this show? Uh, Jesse and the Olympics or something like this? The, um, it's a stupid show, but I, I, I watch about 50 times. I hate it, but I keep watching it over and over again. What it is is um, these kids are half gods and, and, and half humans. Mm -hmm. They're, they're um, nephews. And, you know, so they, they show Apollos and Zeus and, you know, all these gods and stuff that are there. But they, they, they look at everything differently. They don't look at the world the way the humans do because they think like gods. Mm -hmm. so, so they don't live their life according to the same laws. Mm -hmm. they, they, don't, they don't live their life according to the same barriers and the same boundaries because they don't think humanly. Mm -hmm. They think like gods. So if we want to think like God, that's what we got to do. We got to think like gods. So we got to have the mindset that our life my circumstances, my family, my body is not inside the boundaries of this human world. My, nothing about me is trapped in what the world is going to tell me or what a doctor is going to tell me, what my parents told me. I'm not bound by that mm -hmm. because God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above mm -hmm. all that we can even ask or think according to you. According to the power that's in you. According to a part of you. So you are in the form of God. So now we've got to begin to think like God. I can't think like a natural man no more. And the Bible speaks against it. The natural mind is hatred against God. So God said, I need you to have a different kind of mind. Because that natural mind hates me. But when you receive the spiritual mind and think like me, you're going to do things differently. 
you're going to be able to just do any kind of miracle that comes upon your heart with compassion to do for somebody. Not that you want to put on a show, but when you have that compassion to move, if you think like God's, you will be able to say, come on, rise. Because you ain't thinking naturally no more. You're thinking spiritually. And, then you, and now it's like, all right, so he, I see him. He's hurt. He's at the pool of Bethsaida. What would Jesus think? Jesus is going to think, you want to get up? Come on, get up. In our natural mind, we're going to be like, hey, that's messed up. It's like that. I'm going yep. to pray for you. I'm going I'm I'm to pray for you, man. Hopefully a miracle happens for you. Somebody gets you in a pool or something. Uh, you know. That's not how Jesus thinks. Jesus thinks like a guy. He thinks, I'm not bound by what's going on in your body. Nothing about me says because you can't walk, I can't make you walk. Mm -hmm. So I think differently. So now I'm going to go to you and say, do you want to get up? Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to get up. Well, grab my hand. Let's go. Pick up that mat. Stop, stop, don't, don't, don't lay on that. <laughs> yeah. Carry that thing which you once laid on. Mm -hmm. Carry that. Yeah. We think like gods. I know this almost sounds like heresy. <laughs> I know it's teeter-tottering. But we know God is God, Jehovah is who he is. But if we are his children, and Romans 8 uh, 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 talks about us being adopted, uh, and Romans 8, 17 says that we are joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be a, a joint heir, that means you have legal rights. An heir has legal rights to everything that they are heir of. So now, if I am joint heir with Jesus, that means everything that he has, I have. So that means that I can begin to think differently and think like him about every single situation in life. I will never have to let anything get me down. I can be asleep in the boat while everybody else think they're going to die. Everybody else paying attention to the waves. And the waves, see, the, the waves scared them to where they thought they were going to die, but the waves didn't even wake Jesus. <laughs> he his dream just rocking. <laughs> <laughs> he just rocking. You know why he just rocking? Because in no part of his mind will he ever think that a wave can kill him. It, it's no place in Jesus' mind that a wave is going to overtake the boat that I'm on and kill me. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> so because he doesn't have that thought, there's no reason for a wave to even startle him. It's no reason for the ship shaking to even wake him up. He can be comfortable in the middle oh. of everything that's going on because he understands and he has no place in his mind for being overcome. He has no place in his mind for thinking that he can be killed. He has no place in his mind for thinking that anything can happen to him before his time. Uh. My time is not yet. He said yeah. it over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and when they tried to kill him over and over again, sometimes he would just disappear. They go to grab him. They look where Jesus at. He's just going. He's somewhere else doing some more ministry. Right. Let's turn to Colossians chapter wow. three. Wow. You gotta think like God. Uh, Colossians chapter three, verse two, and it says, "Set your affection on things yes. above, not on things on the earth." Now, what it literally says is set your thinking, set your mind, what you think on things above and not on things on earth. Now, what I was, I've been talking and preaching for a while is about us connecting everything heavenly on earth. Well, a scripture where it says, you know, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, or what it literally says is it, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. So now on earth, you are just agreeing with everything that's going on in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now we got to think what's happening in heaven. Mm -hmm. All of our thinking needs to be saying, what's going on in heaven? And how can I, as Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, 
have his will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven, meaning exactly like. So now, when our mind is set on things above and not things on earth, and everything we think in is pertaining to the heavenly, we live heavenly on earth. What, what is the one thing Jesus always said to proclaim? The kingdom is at hand. Tell them everything heavenly is now here on earth. The kingdom, everything, and he and he showed it, he demonstrated it by their, by healing all the crying. The Bible says there, there'll be no more crying, there'll be no more sickness, there'll be no disease, there'll be no more dying. And he came down here and said, sickness stop, crying stop, death stop, healing stop, we start. He, he did everything in heaven on earth. And now we are joint heirs with that power. And he told us, listen, you, greater works than I do are you going to do. But you got to think like me. You got to keep your mind set on these heavenly things. Let's turn to John chapter 3. If y'all see the way I got these notes, y'all be trying to figure out how I'm doing this. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm just letting God do what he do. That's right. John chapter 3, we got Nicodemus coming to Jesus. You know, very, very familiar. That's pretty weird. Where do I want to start? Let's just start in verse uh, 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Natural mind. Okay. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So every one that is in the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? What have, what have you been thinking all this time, Nicodemus? You're supposed to be a teacher. You're supposed to be one that's, that's above everybody and showing everybody the way. But what have you been thinking all this time? Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of the heavenly things? I, see, I, Nicodemus, I can't even fully talk to you about what's, what I'm trying to do, about what's going on, because you ain't thinking right. So in, in order for us to even have a conversation, Nicodemus, you got to change your thinking. Because if I begin to try to tell you these things, you can't grasp them. You talk about climbing back in your mother's womb and all this. Just, you're so naturally minded, Nicodemus, that you really think I was talking about climbing back inside your mother's womb, Nicodemus. <laughs> That's why I love, that's, why I, I mean, that's not why I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but I love his humor. And it's yeah, just like, all right, ain't you a black nigga Jesus? Really? You be in the synagogue teaching and you talk about crawling back in your mind womb. You, oh, is your mind alive, nigga Jesus? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> but if you begin to think like me, I can speak some heavenly things that you can agree with. If, if you begin to think like me, I can start saying some things that other people are yeah. going to call radical, and you're going to be like, that sounds all right to me. Uh -huh. I love when I talk to my cousin here, because I, I will say some things, because I'm, I'm walking in the spirit, I'm walking in whatever I'm going to say is going to happen, I'll be like, Dougie, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to the roof, and we're just going to fly. And Dougie be like, all right, I believe that. <laughs> 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 He'd be like, come on. He'd be like, all right, you said it. Let's go. Because now his thinking and the way everything, not just him but all of us, the way everything is transpiring and the way we are walking in the spirit and the way we are hearing from God, when somebody says something that used to sound far-fetched, to us it doesn't seem far-fetched anymore because now our minds are different. So now we can speak something like, you know, we go, this is our 15th year, we're going, to, we're going to be in a building five times this size. And right now, the bank account does not say that. But we can speak that and everybody say, I can't wait to see the new building. Yeah. It's gonna have a it's gonna have a parking lot. It's gonna have a school connected to it. I can't wait. Our bank account don't say that, but our thinking does. 
Because when you're gonna think like God, nothing is out of your grasp. Yeah. Nothing is nothing is too far fetched for you Amen. because even whatever you think, God can do more. Yeah. Yes. So how can anything that you think or say be far fetched if He can do more than you can imagine? Mm. So now our thinking has become so God like that we can speak anything, and the rest of us will be like, "All right, let's go." Mm-hmm. I start speaking about. Taking a trip to Atlanta to have a service and having a ball down there, and people was like, "Let's go." People was just like, "All right, how we, let, let's go. Let, let's do it." That's that's not something a year ago that, that people probably would have grabbed or hold on to. People wouldn't have been thinking, "How are you? How are you going to do that? How are you going to make, how are you going to grab people down there to do it? You and Philly, and but now the way people see the move of God." They see the confidence, and they see that when I say it, I don't say it as a question. I say it as a statement. So now I'm saying, listen, this is what we are going to do. And when you formulate your words in a certain way, people have no choice but to believe you. Because I don't tell anybody what I want to do. I tell everybody what I'm going to do. This is what's getting ready to happen. People are like, all right, all right. <laughs> We're going to do this. Right, well, what do I got to do? Because of my thinking, because of our thinking, it changes, it changes everything. Ooh. Watch this. Let's turn to Acts. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go. Turn to Acts. Uh, the 26th chapter. Get your mind right. Money right. Money. No, that's what you do. <laughs> Watch this here. Acts chapter 26, verse 8. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? That's a funny question. Why should it be thought incredible that God could raise the dead? Now, raising the dead sounds incredible to a lot of people. And, and, and the king and girl probably was looking at him like, what do you mean? That is an incredible feat. But Paul is saying, not according to my thinking. You see, because when we think like God's, this is something that happens all the time. You see, Paul died and came back. Jesus died and came back. Paul raised people from the dead. Jesus raised people from the dead. So Paul, like, this is something that goes on all the time. I don't think this is incredible. <laughs> according to the way I think. A dead person getting that spirit back and getting up and walking is not incredible. It's normal. Can we can, can we get to the place? I'm trying to get there too. Why would you even think that's incredible? Are you serious, Paul? I know, I know they can't have to be like this guy crazy. And the king later on says, you almost really persuade me to become a Christian. That's what the king says to him, because Paul, like, giving his testimony, he's like, this is, this sounds real good, and you serious. King, king, why do you think it's incredible? Mm-hmm. It's it's about that. It's what, kind of, what kind of thinking do you have? Now, this, this, is, this is a Gentile king, a, a, a king that doesn't believe. Now, I'm talking to us believers. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about raising the dead. Why should it be thought incredible that God can place you where he said he's going to place you? Why should it be thought incredible that God can elevate you? Why should it be thought incredible that you can't be what it is that God ordained you to be before you were even born? Why do you think it's incredible? Stop thinking these things are incredible because then you feel like it's something that's so big that that can't be attained. When you start thinking about what you want as normal, it will happen because this is just, this has to happen because my thinking says this happens all the time and in the spirit it does happen all the time but we don't connect to the spirit and our minds are not on the heavenly so we live earthly. So we live inside of everything, every law that's made on the earth. Jesus lived outside of the law of gravity that said, you, if you're on something that is not solid, you sink. That is the law of gravity that cannot be broken according to humans. 
But Jesus' thinking was not bound by that law. So why should our mind be bound by that law? Now listen, I want to walk on water so bad just for no reason. <laughs> just for no reason. I just want to walk on water. That's what I want to do. I don't think God's going to let me because I, just, I don't have a good reason. Like it's, no, it's like it's no ministry behind me walking on the water for real. I just want to do it. So, you know. Yeah, I want to take a picture and put it on Instagram. Photoshop. No, I don't Photoshop. I'm trying to do the real thing. How are you thinking? You think about Photoshop. I'm thinking about actually doing it. Start thinking like God. Think it's incredible? You think it's incredible? <laughs> Romans 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind or think of the things of the flesh. But they that are the spirit, they think of the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritual thinking brings life. And we have so many dead areas in our life. We have so many dead areas in our families. We have so many unpeaceful places in our life. But it says when you start thinking spiritually, mm -hmm. it brings life to all those dead situations and peace. Mm -hmm. So now, it's like Jesus in the, in the ship again. I got peace no matter what's going on. But 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 this is this it goes even a step further because Jesus had peace in the middle of it while it was going on. But when he woke up and came to himself, he stopped it. Y'all missed that. No, I didn't. He got up and just said, All right, that's enough. I understand I had peace in the middle of you, but I'm tired of you being here. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't want to continue having peace in the storm. I need the storm to be gone. So peace. Spiritually minded, spiritually thinking. Because he thought like a God. We got to think like God. Our thinking is going to bring life. Our thinking is going to bring life. Let's turn to John chapter 17. <laughs> John chapter 17. I said I was fooling my hair earlier. Uh, we're here now. John chapter 17, verse 21. That they all, us believers, be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one where? In us. In us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, he gave to who? Them. That they may be one, even as we are one. This is his prayer for us. This is wow. Jesus' prayer for us. Wow. That Father, as I'm one with you, and I don't think it robbery to be in the form of you. The the mind that I have says that I'm in your image and in your likeness. And Hebrews tells us that he is the express image. Yeah. He is the express image of the invisible God. So let them be one with us, just like I'm one with you. Wow. This is Jesus' prayer for us. Mm -hmm. But let them be one with us like I am. And what do we believe about Jesus? Mm -hmm. That he is the third part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Or just one of the parts of the Trinity. Co-equal to God. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not teaching that we are equal with God. Mm -hmm. But boy are we close. Yeah. Not by our own strength. But because that's how he made us. Right. Yeah. He didn't even make men to die. Adam wasn't supposed to die when he was born. When, when 
when, when Adam was originally formed, he was formed that there was no such thing as death. So he had power over death because it, death couldn't even um, um, raise up and be anything around Adam at that point in time. And, and, and Satan goes to Eve and you know tells them, you know, you're gonna, you know, if you eat from this tree, you're gonna be like God. And he was already like God. You ain't, you ain't even know who you didn't even know yes. who you were. So because you didn't know who you were, now he got you chasing something that yeah. you already got. Yes. He got you trying to eat an apple so you can be like God. And God said, baby, I made you like me in the beginning. Right. You ain't have to eat no apple to be like me. Just be like me. Right. Realize that you are like me yes. and live like me. Yeah. Talk like me. Speak like me. Look at things the way I look at things. Think about things the way I think about things. You ain't got to eat or attain nothing to be like me. I made you like me. Wow. <laughs> so because she didn't know who she was, because she didn't know what she was in the image of, she's like, oh, I can be like God? Mm, mm, mm. Maybe he made you in his presence, I mean, in his image and his likeness. Yes. In his I image should. and his likeness. So, we, so Jesus said, let them be one like I am with you. That, that should blow my mind because of the way I, I, I realize who Jesus is. I realize how intertwined he is with the Father that there really is no separation. So he's saying, I want you to make them one with us the way I am with you. And, the, and according to the teaching of the Trinity, there is no difference. They are all equal. They are all one. They just move in different ways. And Jesus says, bring them on the train with us. And then he says, the glory that you gave me, I'm giving it up. The glory that you gave me, I'm giving it up. So why are we not thinking that we are glorious? Jesus, after he conquered death, he came back and was walking through walls. I don't think God would let me do that either. <laughs> I'll be like, God, I just want to be like Jesus. That's all I want to do. I just want to be like Jesus. Let me walk through a wall. <laughs> on the other side of the wall, just let me walk. And, and we can just do two and one, God. Please get us out the way. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Jesus walked. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus began to walk through <laughs> walls after it was all said and done. All right, only got a few minutes left, man. So I'm going. All right, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts I have towards you. What are the thoughts? Because you quote me, Latif. You quote me. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end or to give you some kind of future. So why we don't think that way about ourselves? Why are we thinking so much evil in our life? Why are we thinking so much hurt in our life? Why are we thinking so much pain in our life? Is God thinking hurt and pain and evil against you? No. He said, what I'm thinking about you is good, and I'm thinking about a future for your life. I'm thinking about some hope. I'm thinking about expectancy for your life. I'm thinking about some power that's going to happen in you. This is what I'm thinking about, and when you connect to what I'm thinking about, then you will have it. So yeah, God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us, but what do we think about us and do we realize what God thinks about us? We quote it all the time, not understanding that we need to be connected with what he's saying. He's thinking. This is God. So God said, I'm thinking this. Then we should be saying, well, when God thinks something and says something, hey, I need, to get, I need to get on board with this. Oh, God knows the thoughts and plans. Do you know the plan? You should be thinking about the plan. You should be thinking about what God has for you. You should be thinking about your expected end. You should be thinking these thoughts of good and not of evil. Because that's what he's thinking about you. Why are you not thinking the same way about you? Isaiah 55. I'll read this. No. <laughs> no. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 55. <laughs> now we know this, but we're going to go into this a little tap in here. Yes, you do. Isaiah is one of my favorite books in the Bible. Isaiah 55, verse 8, and we know it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth a bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Now, we focus on his word not coming back to him void all the time. But where did it start at? It started with his thoughts. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. And because of what I think, what I'm saying is not going to come back void. Now he's telling them this because they were far away from him. But when you come to him, he starts saying, my thoughts are your thoughts. And my ways are your ways. And what you say will not come back void. Because we are one in him. He, he's only going to speak like that to somebody who's outside of his will. To somebody that's outside of his way. He's not, he, he, he wasn't going to tell Jesus, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. But Jesus was going to say, all, all I'm thinking is what the Father thinking. So now, if we are like Jesus and we are one with him, he ain't going to speak to us like that. So now we understand how high God's thoughts are. So now, instead of us thinking so low, we got to think higher. So now we are, we got to keep trying to get up to where God is thinking that. No, we probably can never attain some of the things that God thinks. Ain't no problem. We won't. But when we start thinking higher, we will see some things higher. When you shoot for the stars, if you, if you land on the top of a skyscraper, it ain't going to mean nothing to you. Climbing Mount Everest ain't going to mean nothing. It don't mean nothing to an astronaut to be on the top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. An astronaut is used to being outside of Earth. An astronaut is used to being somewhere near the moon. The man that walked on the moon is not impressed by nobody walking on nothing on the earth as he walked on the moon. So when you're thinking and saying, I need to be walking on the moon, you will be walking on skyscrapers saying, this ain't enough, I need to get higher. Yeah. But those that think a skyscraper is something big, when they think it's something incredible to walk on a skyscraper, they're going to be stuck walking on the ground. Mm -hmm. When you want skyscrapers looking down at them like this ain't enough. And they say, how did you get there? I'm saying, forget how I get here. I'm trying to get there. Mm -hmm. My thinking <laughs> says the skyscraper is nothing. Yes. We've got to begin to think like gods. Mm -hmm. Think like gods. Mm. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I think probably cut off on us. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter uh, 10, we're done. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 10, we're done. Brother Nicky gave a great suggestion and it worked too. <laughs> so smart. <laughs> I'm deep into that. Another familiar scripture that we always go to. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Let me get there. And I'm going to start at verse 3. 3? Yes. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We don't war after the flesh. We war after the spirit because our weapons aren't carnal. No guns, uh, no, no swords, or, or no fists. Or no knives, none of that is our warfare. Our warfare is here. Our, our warfare is here, and it tells us to cast down imagination to every high thing that exalts itself against what? What you know. Everything that exalts itself above your thinking, cast it down. Anything that is outside of thinking like a God, cast it down, and then bring it where? Into the, into the captivity, to the obedience of what? God, Christ, the Word. Because we've got to have this word in us, and this word is going to step and conquer on like everything that's going outside of the word. So if we are thinking the word, and the word is Christ, we're thinking like God. So if we're thinking like God, then the word is in us, then the word is going to conquer every single thing that comes up against it. So now everything that's outside of this word is being brought down. Yeah. Every high thing that's outside of the thinking of the word is cast down. And we're having the readiness to revenge all of this obedience when your obedience is full. we got to be obedient to this word. And once we get that word in us, we can't be stopped. We can't be stopped with this word. This word, one thing that will never die. The Bible will be gone. Ain't going to be no Bible in heaven. 
but the word is going to be walking around with us. We got to connect to him. What would Jesus think? Oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Did Jesus think that? Did Jesus ever think he doesn't know how he's going to get through something? How am I going to be able to afford this? How, how, how am I going to find the right person? How, how? Would Jesus think like that? Or would Jesus say, you know what? I'm going to speak it's going to happen. I don't know how my, my, my family members want to get over this, this disease. Would Jesus think like that? Or would he just say, where, 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 where's she at? That's what Jesus would. They, they tell Jesus somebody's sick. He, he, he always is like, all right, where they at? Jared's your daughter? All right, hold on. I'm going to hit. Oh, she was thinking that if she... She was thinking if she just touched me, she'd be healed. So she got healed. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Thinking I, it. I yeah. thought yeah. to myself, not to nobody else, but I thought to myself, if I could just touch him and his girl, I would be healed. And because she was thinking that she was healed. Mm -hmm. But Jairus, all right, yeah, that's over, Jairus. Where's she at? Because I don't think that she's dead. Je Jesus' thinking was so far past the natural realm that when they was telling somebody was dead that he knew he was going to heal, he would call him sleep. Mm -hmm. Nah, she ain't dead. She's, She's sleeping. Sleep. Lazarus <laughs> is sleep. But it's, it, it almost seems to be a contradiction. He says Lazarus is sleep, and then later on he says Lazarus is dead. Mm -hmm. and it's, not, it's not a contradiction. It's because when he said that Lazarus was sleep, their thinking couldn't comprehend it. So he had to bring it down to them and say, all right, he did. I don't really want to say this, but he did. I, I was trying to raise y'all to where I'm at, but y'all couldn't get there. So now i got to step down and tell you he did. And now I'm going to raise him back to life in front of you so you can see, so you can understand what I was really saying when I said he's sleep. He ain't dead because dead niggas old. He doesn't have life in him right now, but he ain't dead. Because I'm going to come and put that life back in him. His thinking was totally different. Totally different. What would Jesus think? If, if it's over, it's over. You can turn it off. You got any comments, any questions, or an offer? <laughs> <laughs>